Hi, my name is Alex Walford. I'm a systems engineer, and in this short video, I want to show you how you can ingest syslog data um, in, a, in a scalable and fault tolerant way. And so, what I've done here, I've set up Nginx as a load balancer. This is listening on port 514. I'm going to be writing data to um, the, the syslog um, listener service. This is running on UDP. So, UDP is um, preferable for syslog, it's fire and forget. And every now and again, I've seen people um, use TCP for things like this. And uh, sometimes it's brought down the systems uh, if they can't keep up with it. So I would always recommend using UDP um, for syslog. And um, so UDP is uh, fire and forget. And another advantage to having um, all these nodes and round robining between them is um, you're less likely to overwhelm a node. If you had just one node and you had a lot of data, that could potentially all get written to one node at once. But if you got round robin, you are spreading out the work across all the nodes. Um, so they're less likely to drop messages. Um, so here I have 514, that's the syslog port. That's actually a privileged port. Um, it's less than port 1024, so um, you need to run this as root or do some kind of like um, work around to make that work. I found it easier to do that in Nginx than to do that on the connect side. I could have done it either way, but um, this was just more convenient. Um, so here I have Kafka Connect. Um, I've got three nodes uh, listening and uh, those are writing the data to Kafka in Avro format. The reason I chose Avro really was mainly um, that the messages are a lot more compact, but there are a bunch of other benefits um, to Avro. But in this case, you know, it's a lot of data coming uh, and uh, you know, we want to make sure it's um, minimizing the, uh, the amount of like IO and disk uh, utilization. So anyway, this is my Fortinet firewall. What I did, I, I logged in here and um, you, you see this send logs to syslog. So that was great. And then no messages were showing up. I thought that was kind of um, peculiar. And it turns out that I had to um, tweak the format a little bit. So, <coughs> excuse me, if I go to my uh, syslog um, uh, properties right here, you can see that um, you know, th these are basically CLI commands that you can run. I, I just dumped these out. These, these are all the settings. And uh, I added this set format CEF, common event format, um, which um, is uh, did recognized um, by uh, our syslog um, listener. And that's perfect, right? So, so, um, so this is the common event format. Basically, it has a, a map of um, things and um, behind the scenes. Let's take a quick look at a message and you can see what it looks like. So basically, I have you know a JSON message coming in here. I have a map. So these are like uh, key value pairs. And this is um, where all the sort of Fortinet specific stuff uh, goes. There's some more general things in here, like the level of the message and things like that. The host name, I think, is in there, like remote address and what have you. But really, the, this is the interesting part, and it's all in this map um, under extension right here. But anyway, that's a, a common event format message from Fortinet. Um, so let's uh, see what I had to do to set this up. So the, the one thing um, that I thought was really important is making sure that um, if a node fails, we don't send any more messages there. And, and this was a little bit tricky because we're using UDP. So UDP is fire and forget. So if you were using TCP, for example, you can load balance. It's expecting some kind of acknowledgement to come back. That's not the case in UDP. So we had to set up a health check. And this is what I had to do. So I have uh, Nginx here. Um, it's writing data out on port 514. That's fine. Um, but in the background, it, it has this health check that's running. And what I'm doing, I, I, I'm um, doing a GET request um, to this uh, endpoint here. And I'm looking in the response to that GET request does this contain the string running? So it's going to return like a whole bunch of um, JSON. But if it says running in there, then um, I'm, I'm good. The, 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 that node is up and running. So let me 
um, quickly switch over to uh, nginx right here and we can we can take a look at, at what the the configuration file to, to do that looks like so um, this is all I had to do. So in, in th this is the relevant part in this stream uh, block here. So look, um, I have my, my um, upstream um, um, stanza here and I, I've got my nodes defined. And I have this match, um, which is the thing that's doing the test. So I'm going to send it this get request, and I'm expecting to see running somewhere in there. If I don't see that, uh, then it failed the test. And I'm going to run this, I think, I forget how often it runs, maybe every 10 seconds. This is all configurable stuff. I just accepted the defaults. And I have to get it to check on a different port. So it's not, it's not checking on port 1514 because um, that's not going to respond, it's checking on the REST endpoint um, that is um, running the uh, uh, Kafka Connect service, which are, in this case I've made uh, to be 8073. Um, so, yeah, there's another couple of um, things that I want to point out in this um, scenario here. Um, so, because these, these uh, machines all have to listen on the same port, you can't run the same task. You can't do this in a distributed way, right? If um, you try and run like two of these tasks on, on one node, the first one is going to bind to the port perfect, the second one isn't. So what we have to do is uh, run this in a standalone mode. Um, uh, so let's, let's take a quick look at that. I'm going to log into one of my um, um, Kafka boxes here. This is running Kafka Connect, and and I had what I what I did. I created a little service definition that's um, going to run the standalone, um, um, you know, Kafka Connect in standalone mode here, uh, and um, so I've got some worker properties. These are just going to contain things here. Let, let's have a quick look at the the worker properties in a moment. Um, so this is going to tell it, basically I want to store this as uh, Avro. So le let's check this out. Look, I've got my REST port here that I've moved off of the default because I also have Kafka Connect running in distributed mode on these boxes. Um, and I, I've told it you know, to use Avro because I want the messages to be nice and small mainly. Um, so let's um, just pop back in and you can see, look, I've got this um, the, the job definition right here. So this is just going to be a, a simple uh, little file with key value pairs. It's using the, the syslog uh, source connector. You know, I just have to tell it the bootstrap servers and what have you. And um, I've enabled this job. So if the machine gets rebooted, I used like, uh, you know, system CTL enable and then the name of this job. And then if the machine gets rebooted, it, it'll, it'll come back online. Um, so that's that's how I'm creating this job on each of the boxes and making sure it's running. Um, so let's um, and and if I was to do a curl command against this box, uh, you'll see you know that um, this is the uh, the definition from the the REST interface. Look, I, I see I'm I'm doing a curl command against this call. I'm using uh, JQ to format this, uh, but you can see that those key value pairs ended up in this task, and there's just like one task um, per node, really. So that this is running independently on three nodes. OK, so let's um, have a quick look at uh, the uh, console consumer. So I've got the Kafka Avro console consumer, and this is going to deserialize those messages using the uh, schema registry. So. Um, let's um, just just run this, and we should see these messages start to flow through. Yeah, okay. These are my these are my syslog messages coming through. So that's great. Um, very good. So I'm just going to uh, stop that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite quite a, a steady clip of messages in there. And um, the next thing I wanted to 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 show is um, just prove that the the fault tolerance actually works. So look. Here I have my three um, downstream um, connect instances, and they're all green. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run a, a REST call, which is going to pause one of them. So I'm going to pause like the third node here. So 
I'll just go over to my terminal, I'll hit this endpoint which is going to pause it, and in a moment this should get picked up by a health check. Yay, look, you can see that that failed, very good. So what's going to happen now is the messages are going to round robin between um, the uh, healthy nodes. Um, so the next thing I want to do is uh, resume it. So let's uh, say we're going to resume and we should see, yeah, look at that, picked up straight away, it's back up and healthy. So this shows that, you know, you could have something go down and come back up and uh, you would lose a minimal amount of messages um, and that's a great thing and it's, uh, it's UDP, so that's, that's, I think that's pretty cool. So, okay, let's have a look so we can see, you know, these are my messages flowing in here, this is in uh, Control Center, and if I just pop over to this tab, you know, this we, we just saw this in the terminal, um, but we should see in a moment some messages, we can take a peek at one of them. Um, yeah, anyway, it's all working, it's all good, and uh, thanks so much for watching, I hope that was interesting. Cheers.